by uh, President Moe. And I made an application for bond pending arrest. There was no provision in the Criminal Procedure Court. There was no provision or a decided case in court in the country at all. But still, I made this application before him. And to my pleasant surprise, Justice Madden gave me the order of bail pending arrest. And bail pending arrest became law of the country. It helped very much a lot of people who were being arrested during the time President Moi was in, in power. My laws, what you have before you, I'm inviting very respectfully that you have to take into account what is happening in the country. <coughs> Here it is, Deputy President of the country. The executive is asking for a conserva the conservatory order to be lifted. Deputy President is not a small position in the hierarchy of Kenya at all. He has overwhelming political following. Himself and our president, President Ruto, work together jointly. <coughs> And they won the election. One of them became president, another one became deputy president. In my view, the two are inseparable. And you cannot take one and leave another one at all. The moment, my lords, you lift the conservatory order, there could be a problem in the country. There could be trouble in the country. Currently, I'm advised the poll rating of our deputy president is 70% in the country. He has won a lot of sympathy votes from those even who didn't like him at all. 70% is quite a big percentage. I've taken the trouble to read the jurisprudence of the uh, United States on impeaching. The first country, of course, that came up with the doctrine of impeachment was the United Kingdom. And thereafter, it was taken up by America. And there is a lot of write-ups, a lot of cases where a lot of people have been impeached. A lot of officers of the state have been impeached, but none of them has succeeded at all in impeaching a president. No president in the United States has been boosted because of impeachment at all. We are a young country. We have got our own problems. Problems of extreme poverty. Our people now are wallowing in poverty. They cannot get a meal. Those of us who happen to be in a certain class are lucky. People like Camino can talk about going for lunch. There are some people in this country who can talk about going for lunch at all. Our people are in a very poor kind of situation. We have problems of tribalism. We are still a tribal society. We cannot pretend that uh, we are more sophisticated at all. We have problems to do with the conservation. We have got problems around ourselves. Our neighbors are not doing very well. Somalia, Sudan, and etc. they are not doing very well at all. I am submitting to you very respectfully these are factors that you cannot afford to ignore. You cannot afford to ignore them at all. And it would be a disaster. It would be devastating for this court to proceed and lift the conservatory order and bring in 
Professor Kindiki as Deputy President. I don't know very much about Professor Kindiki. I have nothing against him. He has never wronged me. And I don't think that he has ever said anything anywhere against me at all. I have nothing against him. But all that we are very much interested in at the moment is to make sure that we have one country. May I remind you the court, the honorable court, the respect. Whenever there has been a great departure from the constitution of Kenya or from constitutional jurisprudence, there has been a problem around. In 1988, 81, and 82, that's a time when a lot of people were being thrown into detention. People like uh, Paul Mwite were hiding somewhere else in embassies, I think in embassies, offices, and so on, because of what was happening there to take a cover. I was personally in detention at that time. That is the time when we had a coup in the country. In the year, I think it's 2007, we've more or less had also chaos in the country. The point I'm trying to make to you, you are my honorable judges, what we have before you, a conservatory order, may look a very small matter, but it's a very big issue when it is looked at and is examined, analyzed in relation to the present position in which we have in Kenya. If I may say so, and this, I wish the Attorney General was here, I would tell him very, I would tell her very bluntly. Those who want the Deputy President out, let us assume he's kicked, he's kicked out. There will be the same people who will come and say, President, you must go. President Ruto, you must go. There will be the same people who will say that. That will be opening chaos in the country. My lords, these are factors that you cannot ignore. In American jurisprudence, they never ignored that at all. When Clinton was charged, with the offense of moving around with Len Whiskey and other women, he had a, 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 quite a, a number of women that he was having sexual relationship with and so on. Somehow, as the state continued to adduce evidence, the Americans found that Clinton's becoming more and more popular in the country. Those who wanted to see Clinton impeached had to abandon the, the idea of impeachment because he was becoming a very, very popular president. And moving him out of the position of president could have brought chaos and misunderstanding in the country. So my lords, I'm saying to you again very respectfully that please do not try to Lift the, uh, well, the lift the conservative order as my land friends are asking for. I hope my little girls have brought my. My lady and my lords, the law relating to impeachment is no longer, as I said, a UK affair or an American affair. It touches on the rule of law in a country. It touches on human rights in a country. It touches on democracy in a country. It touches on supremacy of the Constitution. 
the Bill of Rights, leadership and integrity, separation of power, and the role of the judiciary in administration of justice. My Lord, may I, with your permission, read to you one provision Uh, refer you to Article 150, page 492, a commentary of the Constitution of Kenya, page 150. May I read it to you? 492. This is a commentary in the Kenyan Constitution by our Jurists here, yeah. and this is what they say. They say some able words which are an eye opener. May I read it with your permission? This article, that is the article that is being referred to, is Article 150, dealing with the removal of deputy president. This article, which sets out the situation that a deputy president can be removed can be removed, protects the deputy president from arbitrary decisions. From arbitrary decisions. What has been taken here is an arbitrary decision by a parliament, by the Senate, and that should not be taken by the court at all. Arbitrary decision of the president in the field constitution. If I may pause here, there is a mention of the president. A lot of problems we have had in this country have been caused by the executive, have been caused by the president. We normally have found ourselves in this hostile area because of the acts and behavior of the president. We must tell it as it is. President Moy caused detentions. He acted rashly by putting people in detention. We have had extrajudicial killings because of the presidency. We have had some other ills because of the presidency. May I continue, please? In the repeal constitution, the vice president could be removed very easily, merely by the instruction of the president. That is true. That's how my great friend and my great client, Jaramoki Oginga Odinga, found himself having to resign because of what was happening. Karanja, Professor Karanja, faced a similar kind of problem. He was kicked out by the president, by the roadside. The Vice President could therefore have been said to be at the mercy of the President who appointed and dismissed them at will. The current state of affairs enables the Deputy President to sit a heartbeat away from the Presidency, yet enjoy constitutional protection against whimsical section of the president. Let us not forget those wise words, my lords and my lady. I'm inviting you very, very respectfully. Read those words, page 492. And if it becomes necessary, incorporate them even in your own ruling. What is going on now is that the deputy president and the president probably are not getting on very well at all. In my own humble view, for the years I've worked, a person or persons with whom you are working are not always friends. Sometimes you disagree very, very vehemently, very, very strongly. You may even end up by probably abusing one another, but you still continue to work 
you still continue to work. You do not have your friends to work together. Husband and wife, is there a problem? <laughs> <laughs> husband and wife, and I have handled such cases, husband and wife may be people who do not get on very well at all. They cook separately, food in the house, they sleep in different rooms and so on, but they have made up one decision. They want, they do not want divorce, they want to make sure that the, the children are brought up in a family. Russia and America are not getting on very well at all. But if you go to Moscow, you will find American lawyers, American doctor, medical doctors, American businessmen. If you go even to New York, the same thing, you will find Russians. To have a relationship, you do not have to be friends at all. The fact that the president now and the deputy president do not talk to one another. It does not matter. At the beginning, they were talking very well. They were talking to one another very well. Rachel and... Uh, <laughs> and Rokas. Rachel and Rokas were great friends. Some of them were very happy that you could see a uh, two wives, two uh, presidents, all of them looking like people of the same family. That is the culture we want. That is the civilization we want. That is the peace we want. So that we make sure that we can develop our economy. But not this kind of quarrels and so on, and where one now is able to convince others that we cannot work together, therefore we must divorce. My humble submission, Mr. My Lord. Eric of Obola, who is uh, <coughs> presiding over the bench, please come up with a judgment or come up with a ruling that you are not going to lift these conservatory orders. If you do so, you will be opening a chapter for this country, which, somehow, which we may not be able to handle at all. Currently, let me remind you again, the deputy president is enjoying poor rating of 70% in the whole country. He has attracted sympathy votes from people who like him. And the parliament or national assembly, which actually impeached the deputy president, if you go through what happened was a disaster, was disappointing. It is not something to be emulated at all. If you go to the other house, the Senate, again was a disaster. Can I continue, my Lord? Please uh, wind up your submissions. I'm winding up. I'm winding up. And I'm winding up on this note. My Lord and my lady. I have lived enough in this country. I've lived long enough in this country. And in particular in Nairobi. When you hear a rumor do not be so small-minded and dismiss the rumor at all. The rumor usually has got some truth. So that when you hear Paul Mitch has been bribed, don't dismiss it quickly. <laughs> there may be truth in it. When you hear Kibe was seen with so-and-so, don't dismiss it quickly. There may be truth in it. This is the ability that Justice Madden had, and that's why he was able to rise to where he was. The ability to be able to know what's going on in the country and so on. We are a corrupt country. And Besha 
still controls the country. It controls parliament. It controls senate. Let it not be said it controls petition. Thank you. May it please you, Lord President of the Court and the members of your court, we are happy to reply to our colleagues. Somebody has come from the woodworks. <laughs> My name is Masongo. I appear for Dr. Sharia alongside uh, John Mariri. Sorry. I was just requesting for five I'm, minutes. I'm on high demand. So I, I beg to leave the court. I'm going to deal with some other matters. <laughs> <laughs> my, my Lord, just a clarification whether Kituo Cha Sharia was enjoined. Last time Dr. Aminwa made an application for Kituo Cha Sharia to be enjoined and then you enjoined Dr. Aminwa himself. Yes, yeah, that was done. Yeah. Yes, Kituo appears now as uh, seventh interested party. I proceed? In Five minutes. Your name? My name is Mosongo. I proceed? Yes, please. Thank you so much. Uh, your Lordship and your Ladyship. At Kitosha Sharia, our slogan and motto is that we care for justice. Our intentions at all times is to uphold the Constitution and ensure access to justice. And we have been, uh, for the past 50 years, been re recorded as a, an organization that uh, promotes that. For sure, I'm not 50 years, but I do stand on the shoulders of giants who have been there before me. And I want to just bring out five points in my few minutes. Why you shouldn't uh, vacate the orders or fail to ensure there is conservatory orders. Number one, in promoting justice and the interest of justice, we have petitioners who are saying that their right to fair trial and constitutional rights have been contravened and violated. And uh, it will be so painful for them, genuinely speaking, that... <laughs>